welcome to the house of the Lord, where we come together to worship him and the beauty of his holiness. So good to see your smiling faces again, and thank God for the fact that he allowed us to be here just one more time to worship him in this matter. So if you would, please, just stand and join us as we have our call to worship. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The Lord's testimony is always The Lord's way are more desirable, desirable than gall. And sweeter than honey on the tongue. Amen. Thank you so much. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endure forever.
You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody. Hallelujah and praise the Lord for his love endures forever. His mercy and kindness are good to us. And it's been, uh, what an incredible week it's been. But we have to begin by just thanking the Lord for his goodness to us with all of the um, storms coming through and uh, the possibility of it coming right over us. And we didn't really get the worst of it. And uh, so we want to thank God for his protection of us. So let's give him a round of applause to the Lord. And at the same time, we want to remember those who are in, uh, were in the wake and in the direct hit of uh, Milton. So uh, we pray for those in Sarasota and in Tampa, those especially that got a double whammy with Helene and then Milton. Um, can you imagine uh, how that's like? It, it baffles me how that would be something that just would be un unbelievable to deal with. So we pray for the victims of the hurricane and all of that. So um, for the first responders and all the teams that are going uh, out to help, which by the way, you can help as well. We are um, um, asking for donations to UMCOR. If you make a check out or designate your giving uh, to hurricane relief, we'll put all that together and send it to UMCOR. So make sure that uh, if God puts it on your heart to donate to that, that would be great because uh, they need all the help that they can get. Um, also, uh, we want to remind you to sign in this morning. Let us know you're here. Sign in on the attendance pads. And also silence your cell phones. Um, if you got power and they're charged and they're working, you can silence them. I mean, you've probably been without your phones for a couple of days anyway if you lost power. So for another hour, what's the difference, right? And, no one laughed. That's like, this is a serious. <laughs> don't, don't mess with my phone. All right, but please silence them. And if you need to, you can take a call and go outside. But uh, please, uh, let's uh, be focused on what God has to say to us this, today. And of course, we uh, had to cancel the pumpkin, pa uh, or at least the pumpkin patch delivery. We don't know if they're coming or when they're coming, but we'll let you know as soon as we know. And um, thank you for all who are ready and able to come and help out. But we still have the trunk or treat going on on October 23rd. We still need uh, candy so, uh, and your donations for that. So, and sign up to participate in the trunk or treat. Please do that and let us know. The sign up sheet is in the back here, I believe. So, um, and this is the last Sunday you can order pecans. So um, that's... Uh, very important too. If you if you want to order pecans, today is the last Sunday for that. And coming up in the near future, the church conference, the church conference, which will be at Grace United Methodist Church in Merritt Island. Um, that's October 20th at 1:30. The church conference. If you want to attend that, uh, that's when uh, you'll want to be at Grace at 1:30. And uh, on uh, November 3rd. Uh, and November 10th. November 3rd, we're going to have a special Veteran Sunday where uh, my wife and I have traditionally uh, used Veterans Sunday to focus on veterans' needs. So uh, it's a Sunday that's specifically going to be addressed to the needs of veterans. So if you have veterans who are your friends or you are a veteran, please invite your veteran friends to come and attend. Uh, we will have a, a time of worship and of just welcoming them and um, thanking them, uh, thanking God for them, for their service. And then on the 10th, you'll see in your bulletin, we're going to have a, a special service on the 10th of November for the Wheelow uh, anniversary wedding reenactment. Um, it's a service that will be at 11 o'clock only, and that service will include communion. Uh, half of it will be, the beginning will be a normal service, but at communion, We'll start the wedding reenactment, which is going to be kind of like the sermon of the day or the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the kind of like uh, when you have a, a live action reenactment of something. We're going to talk about how God and the church and the relationship between Christ and the church uh, is reflected in our marriage. So just so you know about that. The altar flowers today are giving are been given by Ada Fields in loving memory of her husband Jack Fields. 
And um, so, uh, and in lieu of that, I'm going to let Frank, uh, well, I, he told me I had to let him speak. So um, he's going to come up and say a few words. I didn't have a choice, so I apologize. Uh, just so, you know that misnomer, uh, what is about to be said does not reflect the, the beliefs or anything of this institution. Or, but, uh, I, I love you too, Richard. <laughs> Hi, Frank Conover, Staff Parish Chair. And this is an announcement that uh, Richard and our pastors uh, in the past don't give. I have to give it. October is, a, is Pastor Appreciation Month. And if you would like to appreciate him by uh, giving a card or uh, a, a note, please put it in the baskets uh, in the back or uh, deliver them to the office. Next Sunday, uh, between the two services, we will have a little appreciation party for him. So now you know why he can't make this announcement. <laughs> so, uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be around here and there. Thank you. Just a note, I see in the future date here on October 19th. The pumpkins arriving on the 19th, is that true? Or is that? Okay, so. Okay, so uh, just in case you read that, um, again, we don't know when the pumpkins are coming. That was probably, um, I was just checking and no one's perfect and, and I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, as guilty as anyone else to miss something. So. Uh, it's just a matter of make sure that uh, we check on things, and this week has been full of surprises, so um, the most important things that were needed to be done got done, and so uh, we are uh, well and um, safe, and we're here, so just wanted to cover that, but there is football this Friday, and there is parking, right? Football football tomorrow and Friday. And we need to do parking for both? Yes, I'm, I'm leaving parking on Friday, so anybody who wants to assist, you're more than welcome. Please. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly God, uh, we just want to worship you and lift up our hearts. So thank you for your blessings and for your kind uh, protection of us in this, these days. And uh, we thank you that uh, we are spared the worst of the storm, but we um, are uh, lamenting the loss of life and lamenting uh, the broken homes and the, the, the destruction that uh, these two hurricanes have left. And so we pray for them as well and lift them up and ask for your healing and your, um, your power to bring community together and uh, help those uh, communities be rebuilt. And we ask, Lord God, that as we worship you this morning, we would uh, draw closer to you as you promise that as we draw closer to you, you will draw closer to us. So abide in our worship and lead us in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.
forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing
pause just for a moment to say thank you for looking out after us. All the turmoil of the storms and the tornadoes that have come our way, you still allowed us to be here today. See, Satan thinks that he has taken our praise away, but he has not. We give thanks to you in the good as well as in the bad because you're king of all. You are God. We know that you love us in spite of what happens around this world. We know you care. So this is the time, Lord, that we draw nearer to you because without you, we know we cannot make it at all. But we're doing just fine because we're in the arms of our Savior that loves us. So, Lord, remember all of those that have gone through the storms and through the trials and tribulations that are yet ahead. We give you praise in advance because we know you will take care of us. This is our humble prayer that we offer up to you today as we continue to magnify your name. In the lovely name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. God, we know that you are here with us and you are urging us and encouraging us onward. 
you want us to take another step of faith today. Uh, you want us to draw closer to you uh, because uh, you care for us and you know that the best thing for us is to be in unity with you and with each other. So help us to abide in your presence today, to just um, give to you all our cares, um, to give to you the things that are making us anxious and worried. To also, Lord God, just uh, have your spirit uh, mold us and make us into the image of Christ. And we know that there are many that need our prayers today, and we just want to begin this morning by lifting them up together. Bring to our minds those that need prayer, those that are hurting, those that we know. We have many to pray for in our list. Uh, Jean, Kara, Ada, Pat, Mark, Ruth, Barb, and Pete and Judy. And for those, of course, still, that are recovering from the effects of Hurricane Milton. And Lord, we pray for our community that this experience will help us to grow closer in collaborating with each other and collaborating with uh, um, the community uh, leaders to better facilitate, Lord God, uh, the safety and um, the care of the children and of our elderly and to be mindful of the homeless and the hungry. To open our hearts, Lord God, to their plight. That we would, uh, as you say in scripture, to suffer and to sacrifice for each other. So that through our suffering and doing your will, we would glorify you. So continue to speak to our lives. Continue to work in our world. Especially with the um, escalating war. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, between Israel, the, um, Hamas, um, and um, with the heated interactions with Iran, Lord, uh, it's just like a powder keg ready to blow. We pray for your peace and for your spirit to bring calm and to bring a ceasefire. And we pray for us as we have... Uh, uh, how many days to the election and we pray for all parties involved and for um, Lord uh, just a safe and non-eventful election we pray for our leaders and those that are running for positions of leadership we lift them up and pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment and guide them as they try to lead others and so now we come to you with a prayer that you taught us to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, we invite the children to go to Children's Church this morning. And uh, before the ushers come forward, uh, we have special music during the offertory today. And so I'm going to invite Tom, who... Uh, is going to be playing this song called Me and Jesus and My Old Guitar. He wanted to say a couple of words before he uh, sang this song and showed us his uh, guitar acumen. And uh, he's going to say a couple of words about this song and then we'll uh, pray for the offering. Uh, guitar player that 
we both like a lot, Tommy Emanuel. When I got back, we were talking about the guitar uh, get together and everything that went on. And I said, well, if you like Tommy Emanuel, you'll like Doyle Dykes. And he said, who? So I sent him a clip of Doyle doing about 15 minutes of religious and uh, patriotic music and a second clip of Doyle doing a song that he wrote called Me and Jesus and My Old Guitar. I was fine for 24 hours until I got a text that said, I really like that Me and Jesus and the Guitar song. Can you play that? I played it in a few churches. Another text. Can you do the solos? <laughs> yeah. And then I got another text. Would you be willing to do it sometime in the next few Sundays? And the still, small voice that comes from God said, Well, brother, you've got the shovel. You can finish digging this hole. <laughs> I said, Yeah. <laughs> so, but about 35 years ago, I took a guitar much like this when I was coming back from playing a little gig in a nightclub. And I saw this little church off on the side of the road. And I stopped and pulled the guitar out of the case and said, I hope the door's unlocked. And I went in and I put the guitar on the altar and I said, God, I will go wherever you send this thing and I will play for whoever you want me to. So you send me to your folks and I'll play. So if you like this, you know, yell, scream, throw babies up in the air. And if you don't, then do the same thing. And that way people watching at home can say, what did I miss? <laughs> Let's pray. The ushers come forward. Thank you, God, for how you lead us and touch our lives and how when we give to you our gifts and all of who we are and pray that you would lead us, you do. You, uh, your grace is sufficient and sure and steadfast. And um, Lord, we pray that through these tithes and offerings and this offering of music, uh, we would, uh, Lord, draw closer to, to you and, and also to what you desire for us, what you desire for our community, and that these gifts would go to glorify your name, to change people's hearts, to spread the gospel of the good news to the um, um, corners of the world, and that we ourselves, Lord God, would allow you to transform us through the joy of giving. And so we praise you and give you thanks for all of your gifts, in Jesus' name, amen. Me and Jesus and my old guitar. Me and Jesus and my old guitar. Well, I love to get along, pick my fingers to the bone. Hope that God is patting his foot on the throne. Me and Jesus and my old guitar. Me and Jesus and this bottle of Nashville guitar. With these six little strings I'm gonna pick for my king Me and Jesus and my old guitar to the bone hope that god is patting his foot on the throne me and jesus and my old guitar me and jesus and this old martin guitar with these six little strings i'm gonna pick for my king me and jesus and my old guitar
that's all it is. We're going to have to have some kind of hoedown night where we can get a banjo and I, I can play spoons, I think. You can play the banjo, okay. We'll do a little country, country fried chicken gospel night. All right, well, um, we've been going through this uh, series of being more than Christian and uh, last week we talked about how um, the rejection of Jesus was at the core, really, um, uh, this sin of hate, and that hatred is at the core of suffering. And uh, if uh, Jesus was rejected, uh, he said that uh, we as the disciples of his, those who follow him would also be rejected, and um, that that rejection and that conflict with the spirit of the world, the spirit of the world which rejects God, which rejects Jesus, which um, wants to pull us away from the path of being uh, the apprentices to Jesus um, is what causes suffering in our life. And we kind of spoke and didn't really touch on the greater evil that exists in the world, but we did mention that it does exist. Um, but we mostly talked about how we as individuals, um, as we practice love and we practice the gifts of the Spirit and as we engage in the practices that Jesus practiced. Um, we'll continue along those lines today because it continues into the story of what it means to be healed from sin. And that's a big topic. We won't get to the bottom of it, especially since I only have uh, maybe uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But we will um, definitely touch on it. But it con it's connected to what we talked about last week. Um, We've been talking about uh, the fact that uh, being a follower of Jesus is about being with Jesus 24-7, being aware of Jesus' presence in our life, um, wanting uh, to be like Jesus. So we have observed his life, his teachings. We've observed in the Beatitudes, for example, how strongly he emphasized kindness and generosity and a whole change of perspective in the world because of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom is the, the, the place where we belong. The kingdom of God is where our citizenship lies. And so following Jesus means also doing as Jesus does. And beginning that process is the, the process of, um, uh, of having to uh, uh, accept that we will suffer because the world rejects Jesus and will reject our attempt to become like Jesus. And now uh, we realize that uh, one of the things that keeps us from following Jesus and being uh, the disciples that uh, he wants us to be, and the reason why he came to save, he came to save us from our sins. So uh, being more than Christian is not just about being saved uh, and going to heaven. We talk about uh, that a lot, but we want to, to realize that uh, following Jesus is about becoming like Jesus and doing as he did, which means, as we will read in a moment, this is First Peter, uh, and it's uh, in the context of that famous phrase that you are the holy priests. We are holy priests. Um, the ones who are interceding and God's intermediaries here on earth. We are his body. He, we are his temple. And uh, those are lots of different things that we might not have touched on recently. But we're going to jump into uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 in the midst of this discussion of um, laying aside our old selves, our, our old ways, and being uh, uh, the, the ones who... Uh, are grounded in the Word of God. And uh, so this is the source, and this is the, 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 the core uh, message of how we are to be healed. So uh, 
This is what it says in First Peter, um, verses 1 through 5 and 22 through 25. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full expression of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. Notice that issue of rejection is here and present in this context as well. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that are pleasing to God. And then in verses uh, 22 and following, um, which is in the middle of a context of he's speaking to uh, slaves, but uh, we won't go into that. This is uh, still applicable to all of us. It says here, verse 22, He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He personally carried out our sins and his body on the cross, so that we can be dead to sin and live to what is right. By his wounds we are healed. Once you were like sheep who were wandering away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Let us pray. Lord, we all need healing from sin. Help us not to hear this as that we are bad or sinful, uh, but that we are full of this, uh, this sickness that's in the world called sin. And you have, came, you have come to heal us. Help us understand how this healing uh, is made real in our lives as we study your word today together. Amen. So, uh, um, who here loves cotton candy? Yeah, yeah, cotton candy, yeah. Everybody loves cotton candy, right? It's, I mean, all it is is a bunch of calories, it's carbs, uh, and it has you know, no nutritional value, and it absolutely has no nutritional value whatsoever. Um, oddly enough, you know, it's really bad for your teeth, but it was invented by a dentist. I don't know, maybe it's some kind of scheme to make us go to the dentist more. Um, but the fact is, is that the cotton candy is one of those things that uh, the more you eat it, the more you want it, right? You put it in your mouth and it dissolves and the sugar just um, goes down your throat and you're just uh, ecstatic. It's, it's the, the, it gives you the greatest punch, uh, an instant a fulfillment of desire for the amount that you have. And um, so uh, it's, it's very popular at, you know, uh, parties and at the carnivals and uh, definitely at uh, um, Disney World and things like that. Cotton candy is everywhere. But cotton candy, like I mentioned, has no nutritional value. Um, it doesn't do you any good. And if you really have too much of it, you, you get sick and it's bad for your teeth. So um, uh, one of the things is it dissolves very quickly and it's gone in an instant. And so you have to get more. And that's why if you keep eating it, um, you can lose track of how much you've had. I'm, that's never happened to me, of course. But, uh, um, and then there's all the stickiness to it, which is a whole other issue, you know. Uh, but, um, and in comparison to to cotton candy, honey is just as delicious. Actually, it's more delicious. Honey is one of those things in life that's a mystery, and yet it's of great nutritional value. Um, I was uh, 
reading a post that said that you could survive on, on honey alone for like 28 days. And uh, I looked that up and it's not true. Um, but I, I still had to bring it and talk to you about it because um, honey is still really good. It's, um, the enzymes in honey do you very well, your digestive system. And you, you eat honey when you're sick and you need uh, your throat to be soothed. Um, it has some other qualities that, uh, that benefit us and it's natural and, and um, it's sweet. And um, one of the things about honey is that it lasts long. It's, it's something that if you put a teaspoon of honey in your mouth, uh, it's going to take some time for you to enjoy it, dissolve it, and swallow it, right? So in every way, um, it's the better of the two, right? The better um, sweet and the better experience than cotton candy. Um, now, uh, honey is not comparable to what... Uh, uh, Peter in this passage calls the pure spiritual milk. But in comparison to cotton candy, it definitely is the better choice. And you see, cotton candy for certain is not at all in comparison anywhere near what we would call spiritually in food related issues or in spiritual related issues not good for you. Uh, cotton candy would reflect maybe um, how sin in the world makes us respond to it and how we desire to have more of it, but it's an instant pleasure or an instant um, emotion that doesn't last very long. And you have to constantly have more and more of it in order to get the same uh, kind of effect. But in all in all, um, it, uh, it, it wants to behave like or it wants to convince us that it's a, a value, but it's a, not a value. And um, so as we talk about healing from sin, we have to understand that sin in all of its uh, different aspects in the world is really what's wrong with the world. And every culture, every philosophy, every um, you know, philosophy, uh, um, uh, uh, philosophers and, and, and educators and, and uh, religious people have been struggling with what's wrong with the world. It's a beautiful world. It's a great world. We, we have a beautiful life, and yet it can be so destructive, um, kind of like Hurricane Milton. I mean, you have to admire how beautiful it was when it became a Cat 5 in less than 18 hours. Yeah, a beautiful, massive storm that uh, showed us the destructive power of nature and of what uh, this world can produce. Uh, and yet it such a t was and is such a terrible thing and threatening to our lives. Um, the, the sin in the world is more than just what we do because we do have our actions that are sinful but we have actions done upon us that are sinful as well. And then there is the, this greater sin in the world that comes to us from things like natural disasters or, or it comes to us from the societal brokenness of the world uh, or the cultural differences that we uh, have that at the core, remember we are talking about at the core of them, the seeds of those differences and of that suffering of that seed of evil, right? Uh, in the scripture it says, do not let anger, right? Don't uh, let anger have a foothold in your life. Don't go to bed angry and give the devil a foothold into your life. Uh, hatred and anger um, are part of this uh, kind of sinful nature that's in the world. And um, when we talk about having sin in our lives, it's kind of like... Um, uh, John Mark Comer uh, says that it, it's more like when you go to the doctor to get diagnosed for something you know is wrong with you. You, you can't put your finger on it. You, you, you might think it's one thing and it's another, but it's kind of like being diagnosed and said, hey, you have COVID or you, know, you have cancer or you have um, something wrong with this other part of your body. It's not that you are that it's that that is happening to you. And the things that we do that contribute 
to those things being a part of our life build up. And it's a broken world. It's a world that is marred by sin. And um, when we try and heal ourselves, when we try to go it alone, when we try to, to um, you know, follow uh, philosophies or ideas or, or, or other religious solutions, they have their, their positive nature, right? There is good in everything that is good. When something produces good things, I, I believe that God works in, through, in and through those good things. Um, but uh, we cannot ever rid ourselves of what has happened to us or the injury of sin that has occurred in us uh, or even um, as, you, as we become and we try to change our behavior. It, that's why when you tell someone, stop doing this, this is bad, um, don't do it, they'll go right ahead and do it, right? Um, telling someone that what they're doing is bad and then shaming them or guilting them is not the best way to get them to change their behavior. The way to change their behavior is to allow them to see how their actions and how they are living is injuring them and help them to see that God's love for them wants more for them than what they can accomplish for themselves. So, as the scripture says this morning, we are to rid ourselves of evil behavior, not because we can do that alone, but because when we know Jesus Christ, it says, right, um, now that you have tasted the Lord's kindness, rid yourself of all of these behaviors. And like a newborn child, you must crave pure spiritual milk. Stop going back to those things that give you an instant or a, a, a feeling of assurance and, and security, but that are broken in and of themselves. Grow into the full experience of salvation. And here we're uh, uh, presented once again with this idea of being more than just Christian in our culture. And remember, I'm not saying that being Christian is a bad thing. It's just that we need to understand that when we talk about being Christian, that there's so much baggage accompanying that. And there's also stuff that we have been accustomed to doing that needs to change because God has called us to this world. And this is our parish. Wesley, John Wesley said, this is our parish. The world is our parish. We must go out and speak to it and share God's love and the good news of Jesus Christ. And we can't do that if we're talking and living in a way that no longer addresses the needs of the people or communicates God's love the way it used to. But in and of ourselves, when we talk about following Jesus and doing as Jesus did, it's a constant call to being remade. Remember, we talked about not just being conformed, to not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so this goes for all of us. It goes for the five-year-old as well as the 95-year-old. It goes for the person who's a first-time Christian to, as well as to the person who's been a Christian for 35, 40 years. It's because all of us are always called to crave the pure spiritual milk, to grow into being the living stones, verses 4 through 5. This is a great thing. This is the analogy, right? The metaphor of the church. God is building us into a spiritual temple in which he will uh, live in. And in this temple that he is building us into, he will be glorified and honored. You will offer your spiritual sacrifices that are pleasing to God. So when you begin to lay aside your sinful nature and your sinfulness, you, it's not because you do it alone, but because you do it with the help of the Holy Spirit filling you as we surrender together into the hands of Jesus. We've already talked about the, the power of sin. And along with sin comes the fact that there are powers that want to separate us from the love of God. 
They want to convince us that we're unlovable. And one of the, the, the worst things is to convince us that we can do everything ourselves. We can be good people by ourselves. We don't need uh, uh, Bible study, or we don't need prayer, or we don't need to, to um, have more time with Jesus. Who needs to come to church on Sunday? We can do this alone. No, the truth is, is that one of the main practices of Jesus is coming together as community. And healing happens in community, beginning with confession. And this is what James chapter 5 teaches us. James chapter 5, 26 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Pray for each other. We like to pray for each other. We like to ask for healing. We, we, we want healing. We desire healing. But the one thing that we miss and often don't pay attention to is the fact that there is a deeper healing that needs to happen that is more important or just as important, we can argue, but I would say more important than our physical healing is our spiritual healing. Our heart, our soul needs to be re, uh, rebuilt by the love of God, by the Spirit of Jesus. All the trauma that has happened to us, um, whether it's family trauma, uh, cultural trauma, or trauma that we experience because of war or of natural disasters, um, relationships, um, issues of abandonment. In our culture, remember, um, this issue of going it alone also is very destructive. Because if I can go it alone, then that means I can not care about you. And if I don't care about you, then I'm sinning because well, I cannot care about what God cares for if I do not care for my neighbor. I cannot love even myself or others if I don't love God. And vice versa. So the healing practices that come to us from Jesus are those famous practices that we talked about. Uh, praying, fasting, coming together as a community of faith on the Sabbath. Resting in the Lord, um, doing uh, uh, service, acts of service to the community, um, uh, confessing and witnessing uh, to the world of Jesus' light in our lives. But in just very basic, practical ways, we can begin by confessing our sins to each other. And confessing our sins to God in private is a start. But when you get together with a close group of trusted friends, of trusted brothers and sisters, confession begins to unlock within us the fear of judgment, the fear of not being loved, the fear of being shamed. And that's why we all need to be working on our relationship with Jesus so that when we are entrusting ourselves to each other, do you see how complicated, see how intricate this is? When I'm doing, you're doing your personal work to be, re -trans to be transformed in the Lord so that when we come together here at church or come together in Bible study or in small groups, we'll be ready and able to hear each other's burdens and pray for one another, not just for salvation, not just for things that get better, but to be able to walk through the storms of life together and also the ability to forgive and to hold others without judgment. Because we seem to be very good at that. Somehow that is something that plagues us a lot. N.T. Wright has a story about what the kingdom of God is like. And T. Wright is a New Testament scholar and historian. He says this, that um, in the old days when people were building um, cathedrals and building these massive churches, 
um, the way it was done is by these experts that would come and work on different things about the, the, the build. And uh, he talks about how the stonemasons, uh, after everything was built and the church looked plain on the outside, how these churches became to look so beautiful and how it is that they last for centuries is because the stonemasons would come and with the quarry and quarry the rocks and cut the rocks into the stones or into the bricks that would go up on the wall outside, kind of like the bricks here. These are mimicking the kind of bricks that would go up on the outside of the cathedrals in order to make them strong and for them to become the beautiful um, uh, examples of God's kingdom. And that's what the churches in the old days were. The, the big cathedrals represented the glory and nature of God. And uh, the stonemason uh, wouldn't necessarily know um, how the, the whole thing would look, but, but he would just uh, work on his craft and make one brick at a time. And he would not necessarily know where those bricks went, but then he knew that they were important. He knew that each brick had a place and that each brick was important to the building of the cathedral. And also, when a stonemason comes and makes the bricks, the bricks themselves, they each individually by themselves can't do a lot. They just look like a brick or a piece of rock. Um, but together, they would make a beautiful section of the sanctuary. And people admire these cathedrals for centuries. And this is the kingdom of God, you see, how he uses us. And through this process of him being the stone mason and we being his, uh, his, uh, the stones, the living stones that Peter is talking about here, the stones that he is making, we might not know where we fit into the grand scheme of God's plan, but when we trust in Jesus, and trust in the hands and that, that God is making us and molding us into the people that we need to be to fit in right into his um, building of his sanctuary, we will be able to accomplish great things. And also that um, that's from God's perspective. And then from our perspective, as the bricks, um, we would trust that wherever we are, in that space, our healing will come as we um, allow ourselves to be molded and made and placed into the place that God wants us to be in his kingdom. And when we find our place, when we are placed in the place that we belong, healing is happening, and it might be different than what we imagined but when we look from afar and when we come to look at all that God is doing in our lives and maybe step away from the each moment that, that kind of is confusing and maybe not clear, we'll be able to see God's great handiwork in each other's lives, especially when we need to remind each other how beautiful of a handiwork and of a creation we are. We are both beautiful and wonderful because God's grace has made us. Let us pray. Lord, as you um, continue to heal us, uh, let us allow you uh, to continue your work. And as young or as old as we are, or as knowledgeable we are, or just beginning to try and see what kind of life it would be to follow you, you have a plan for every one of us, and you are calling us to place us in the right place that we need to be right now so that we can reflect your glory and your greatness in the world. Thank you for your love and for your healing. Help us to be um, this community of healing and safety for others. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Go forth today in the assurance and security of God's arms, that he is continually working in you something beautiful and great that will reflect his, sal his saving grace into the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Remember the church conference after church at 1.30 at Grace next Sunday. See you then.